evening. God bless you, everybody. Going to go over again this week's uh, Bible study. And as always, I want to tell you, we're still uh, working on this series called Developing a Relationship with God. Uh, we're on part five of this uh, of this series. And uh, we're going to be talking about some of the benefits. We talked about the benefits in our last uh, lesson. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about another benefit. And it's going to be going a whole different route. Uh, we'll be talking about how your prayer life will work on the behalf of others. And I'm going to show you here in Scripture. I'm going to talk about that. And our reference scriptures tonight is going to be coming from the book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 5 through 18. Amen. Uh, before we get into what we really need to be talking about on this uh, part 5, I want to get a little personal with you and, and talk to you from the heart. A relationship with God is something you should take serious. It's uh, nothing you should treat it nonchalantly. You should be dialoguing with God on a daily basis. Uh, you need to read his word and see what he is saying to you. Uh, how he can lead and guide and direct your life. It's when you don't read your Bible. It's when you don't spend time praying and talking to God. You will find yourself drifting further and further away from him. And then you will find yourself going back to your old habits, hanging out with them same old friends, doing the same old thing. Jesus said, I have gone to prepare a place for you. And where I am, you can be too. So if you want to be with Jesus when he comes back, you're going to start doing some changing in your life. And the first place you need to start is having a relationship with God. And you got to start talking to God on a personal level. You don't have to go to no room anymore where somebody on the other side slides the window and you say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. When Jesus died on the cross and said that it is finished, you now have access to God. You can talk to God all on your own. But tonight we're going to talk about your relationship. If it is strong enough, you can talk to God and God will listen to you and help others. So let's go ahead and get on into this, and I'm going to be talking about you personally, because this is about your relationship, not mine. And there are some things I had to work on, because I found out having a relationship with God, and it's crazy, corrupt, broken world, it ain't easy. It takes obedience, it takes dedication, and yes, it's going to take a lot of mental work, because this is the only thing stopping you from having a relationship with an almighty God. Amen. I was once asked by an individual. A very piercing question. And this is what she asked me. Does God really hear the prayers of those. Who know in their hearts. That they are just not right. Now what she was referring to. Was how does God respond to the prayers of those. Who are not living in the ways. That are pleasing to him. She was speaking of those who like to gossip. She was speaking of those who like to tell lies. Uh, people who are lusting after the opposite sex all the time or the same sex. People who hate other people are jealous of other people and so on and so on and so on. You know, it's like a grocery list of things. It would take me all night to list all the things. But if you are a true child of God, you know the things that God is pleased with and the things he's not pleased with because he mentioned them in the Bible. And if you don't know some of the things that he's not uh, pleased with, just please, by all means, go read Romans chapter 1. He, Paul writes a grocery list of things God is not pleased with. Now, my response to that person was, he doesn't hear their prayers. I know that's going to sound controversial to you, but I got an answer for that too. People who know in their hearts that they're not living right, not doing right, he doesn't hear their prayers, and this is why. He does not respond to those who have chosen to continue in this type of lifestyle. They have no, they ain't going to change. And they have no, no interest in repenting of their sin. I, God does not play. You either with him or you not with him. So if you want to choose to lend to your understanding, you are telling God, I know what you're saying, but I like the life I'm living. You telling me what I can't do and I want to continue to do these things. So no, God does not 
hear those prayers. But I will go on and tell you what he does listen to as you follow me in our lesson, okay? You must first realize that you just can't go to God any old kind of way and expect him to hear and respond to your prayers. Even James told them in James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. He is saying here, you coming to God with all this mess in you, and you still thinking God going to give you things, and then you also asking for things he ain't going to give you. You know, if you ain't living right, and you drinking and smoking dope, and talking about people, lying and cheating, committing adultery and fornicating and all that mess, how do you have the nerve to ask God on the weekend to give you the numbers to the pick three out of Powerball? James said, you're talking crazy. And you're asking for things that you want to heap up on your flesh. That's all you're doing. And then Jesus was talking about these people out here worrying about everything. And he gives them the answer to that. Look what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verses 32, 33. Jesus tells us, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, Jesus was saying, God knows you need stuff. But in order to get these things, he said, get right with my Father first. Make him your priority. And all this other stuff, this meaningless stuff, and watch this. What do you mean meaningless? Cars, houses, and boats, and all money. If you are right with your Heavenly Father, God will see that you get them things. Brothers and sisters, we are now in the fifth part of our series, Developing a Relationship with God. And tonight I want to talk to you about your prayer life. I haven't talked to you really in depth about that. So I'm going to get a little personal with you, get mad, but i got to tell you the truth. You do realize that through your prayers, that God will help those who are not related to you through your bloodline. But before he can do that, he looks at the sincerity in your heart. God searches your heart. And what are your intentions? Why do you want me to do this for so-and-so? What are your reasons for wanting me to help this person? When you pray to God, are your prayers always a selfish prayer? Are they always about you? God, I need a job. God, I need some money. God, I need a house. God, I need a spouse. God, I need, I need, I need. Doing all of your requests, have you ever stopped and considered what God needs from you? What does he need from you? And only you can answer that question because you need to evaluate yourself and go and search the scriptures and you will find out what God needs from you. You have heard me repeat this statement over and over that your relationship with God must work both ways. If you ask God something, don't just get up and leave from your prayer. Stay there for a minute and see if he will respond. Open up your Bible. Sometimes God has put the answer right there and you just keep the book closed. So how are you going to expect the dialogue to be both ways when you're the one doing all the talking? Go back and look at our last study where he told Solomon, anything you want, just ask me and I will give it to you. Solomon's request was not for himself. He requested that he needed help for God's people. God was so satisfied with Solomon's request, he not only gave him what he asked for, but he also blessed him with things that he did not ask for. That's the kind of God we serve. The one thing I have learned in my relationship with God is, before I can pray for others, I must first pray for myself. Now let me tell you what that means. As human beings, we are not perfect. And this body is loaded with sin and is able to succumb to temptation. So before I can pray for you, I have to go back and look. Was I mad at somebody this morning? Did I get angry? Did I say something about that person? Did I look at somebody with lust in my eyes because I am a human being? So before I can pray, I have to pray for myself first. I told you a few minutes ago, you just can't go to God any kind of way. So, 
if my prayers to God are going to help others, I must ask God to keep my mind pure, my heart clean, to keep me from falling deep into temptation's grasp. And do not believe for one minute, brothers and sisters, that God does not know all about us. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 12, Peter writes these words, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and look at this, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. After I have done my internal cleansing, mean talking to the Lord and praying to get myself right before I go to the throne of grace, I prepare myself to speak to my Father with all sincerity in my heart. And I am very proud, very proud to say that through my many petitions and pleas, I have witnessed God work many of miracles through those that I have prayed for. You will find in your relationship with God that it is a true, that it is a true confession, that confession is good for the soul. You may say, well, why do I have to confess? Why is it good for the soul? Mm. You know, a lot of people have a problem with this, and I tell you why. Why should I confess my sins to God when you the one said that God can see all and hear all? Okay, but I want you to understand something. God is no different than us when it comes to communication. He wants to hear from you. Just like a wife and a husband that have been involved in a good marriage, every once in a while, even though they both might know it, they would like to hear these words. I love you. I love you. Your children know that you love them. But children are very impressive and sensitive. So you not only have to show them love, but you got to tell them from time to time, I love you. I love you. God wants us to treat him the same way. Tell God how much you love him on a daily basis and thank him every day, every day. And not just when he can do something for you. Love him for who he is and not just for what he's done for you. Show God that you really appreciate him. Now, I want to discuss with you something new today. And that is... Once you have developed a sincere relationship with God, you must align yourself. Never talked to you about this before. You must align yourself with others who share your same belief. There is nothing, nothing like a group of baptized believers getting together and petitioning our Heavenly Father on the behalf of others. I've been told that Jesus said, where two or three that are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst. When you become a member of a local church, you will now be a part of what you will, may as well call your extended family. But sometimes be prepared that you will have folks come up to you in your church or without of your church that are going through something, and they will ask you to pray for them. This is when you may have to petition God on your behalf. And first, talking about yourself, like I just told you earlier, you're going to have to pray first. Make cause In case you don't went through a day at work, somebody got on your last nerve, you was thinking something, you was wanting to say something, you need to ask God, clean my mind, clean my heart, because I, I, I can't come to you any kind of way. I need to talk to you. So, once you've done this, tell that person, okay, I'll pray for you. But don't say that and let them get out of your sight. No, you stop right then and there and you call on your Heavenly Father and you speak to Him on this person's behalf. I am urging this because you may not know what this person is going through and their relationship with God may not be strong as yours because this person could also be spiritually immature, but they have been watching you. And probably feel that God will listen to you instead of them. I know that sounds horrible, but some people think that way. I am a living witness that through sincere prayers, prayers, it can get God's attention. And through his sovereignty, he will deliver that individual that you have prayed for. That's a benefit of having a relationship with God. You will have power to help others through your prayers. In our reference scriptures today, we're going to see where a group of believers got together and prayed for someone and God listened and worked on their behalf for this person through their prayers. So let's read our scriptures, the book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 5 through 18. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, 
but prayer was made without ceasing of the church. Did you hear me? But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. He was heavily guarded. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly. And the chains fell off from his hand. Now wait a minute. He sleep between two guards. There's some extra guards outside the prison. But this bright shining light is in there. And Peter's the only one waking up. And as he get up, the chains fell from his hands. They ain't making no noise. Ain't alerted nobody. I want y'all to stay with this. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. In other words, get dressed. We leaving. 12, verse 12, 9 of Acts. And he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Man, I got to be dreaming. This ain't real. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that led into, into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Now they done went past all these guards. They walking through the prison. And they done came to the, the, the exit and the entrance of the prison. And the gate is locked. But the Bible said the gate unlocked himself. And they proceeded to walk out into the street. And when the angel had took him far enough away, the angel left him. Now watch verse 11 of Acts chapter 12. And when Peter was come to himself, when he realized that it wasn't a dream, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. God will deliver you out of the clutches of evil through the prayers of other people. I am a living example of people getting together praying. I like to lost my life almost seven years ago in a fatal accident. But through my church, co-workers, and people I did not work with, their petitions and their pleas, through their prayers, God took me from my deathbed, put me in a sick bed, and now I'm able to sleep in my own bed. Praise God. And when he considered, when, when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. These people are still in the house praying for Peter. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. She was so overjoyed she couldn't believe it. But look, they let him in but ran back in and told how Peter stood before the gate. He's out there. The one we've been praying for. Y'all come on and see he's out there. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. They said, Look, girl, you must be seeing things. Maybe it's a vision or an angel. But to their surprise, look at verse 16. Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, he was telling them, Shh, be quiet. Stop making so much noise. Declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Go tell the other disciples and everything that you've seen me. Tell them what you witnessed, but I can't stay here. Now, the last verse. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of it? They done woke up. Hey, where'd he go? The, the handcuffs is right here. Well, we never left our post. We didn't see her. It was in disarray. It was in disarray. 
And of course, Herod being upset and mad and found out that they had let him escape, had these guards killed. Very evil king. But this is what I want y'all to look at. Did you just see what had happened? Did you see that? Just look at how the power of prayer of those who believe in Jesus Christ can do things beyond anyone's understanding. Peter, even when the angel was speaking to him, Peter thought he was dreaming. Knocking at the door, the people didn't believe it either. Oh, it must be his angel. This just goes to show that if your relationship with God is sincere, you too can do the same thing as these people did. You have access to God. You have the authority through your prayer to aid those who are in need or may be in trouble. A lot of people don't believe in the power of prayer, but their minds are quickly changed when they have witnessed God's awesome power through the prayers of a true believer. I'm telling you, when true believers pray, God can do things you wouldn't believe. There might be someone who was wrongly accused of a crime and through prayer, they are exonerated and released from prison. God invented DNA. DNA is getting a lot of people out of jail. Someone you know finds Christ and gets saved and turn their lives completely around. You've been praying for this person that everybody then gave up on. Now they sang it in the choir, playing the organ, then joined the trustee board, and you just sit back and say, look at God. Someone you've been praying for has lost a child. And you prayed and prayed, and there it is on the news. That missing child is found. Someone you've been praying for, and I'm going to use myself, a person that was once on their deathbed, you are now on the phone with them having a conversation through your prayers. An alcoholic or a drug addict have defeated their habit through the power of your prayers. A person who was once a racist, has now found love in their heart for everyone because they have come to the, real, the realization that God created all of us and he loves us all. None of these things I just mentioned are possible without someone, somebody petitioning and asking God to intervene on this person's behalf. I will say this once again, that through your relationship with God, this is a benefit, he will aid and deliver others out of their predicaments and once you witness God's power working through others you will really know the meaning of that old age old saying he's a doctor that never lost a patient and a lawyer that never lost a case Con to continue to develop to develop your relationship with God and watch God aid others through the power of your prayers God bless you until I see you again next week. And this has been our Bible study for this week. God bless you.